Hello there, my fellow armory servitors, and welcome to another episode concerning the weapons and war gear of the Adeptus Astartes. That is to say, mostly the Adeptus Astartes, since some of the things we talk about in this series are also used in the wider Imperium. And that is the case with today's topic, as we're gonna cover the most commonly seen type of power weapons, aka the power swords. We're gonna talk a little about what they are and how they work, but mostly I'm gonna tell you about power sword patterns and famous individual power swords. Also, I should let you know that most of these unfortunately do not have specific artworks or pictures, so I'll just have to go with random power sword artworks for the most part. I do apologize for that. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? A power sword is a power weapon which, duh, has been shaped into a sword of varying lengths and designs, crafted from one of any number of different materials, though usually adamantium. When its power cell is activated, often by touching a control stud located on the hilt, the blade is sheathed in a lethal, bluish corona of disruptive energy. This energy field allows the blade to carve through flesh, bone, and many forms of armor plate alike, making the power sword a highly effective Imperial close combat weapon. They are used by all members of the Imperial Armed Forces, including the troops of the Imperial Guard and the Space Marines of the Adeptus Astartes. Xenos races like the Eldar or their evil kin, the Dark Eldar, also use it quite frequently. Power weapons have been a part of the Imperium at least since its inception, but their origins more than likely lie in the mysterious Dark Age of Technology. By the 41st millennium, many power weapons are considered rare and greatly coveted personal close combat melee weapons used on the battlefield. Few members of the Adeptus Mechanicus still retain the knowledge necessary to make them, and those that are in existence are often hundreds or even thousands of years old. They are elite weapons, and a sure sign of high status anywhere in the Imperium. Like a common sword, they allow the user greater attack options and defensive responses than many other weapons. Entire specialized styles of combat have been designed around the expansive number and variants found across the galaxy and beyond. Power weapons require great investments of time and rare materials to produce. Therefore, they are typically reserved for ranking members of the Adeptus Astartes, or very powerful and influential members of the Imperium. Often the signature weapons of elite warriors, power swords are perhaps the most dangerous of melee weapons. In the hands of a skilled swordsman, they combine a deadly offense with a nearly impenetrable defense. They come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes, and entire schools are devoted to their mastery. In theory, any weapon can be upgraded to become a power weapon, given the necessary technology. Though in practice, there is a traditional array in use by the Adeptus Astartes. The sight of an angel of death charging into battle is very intimidating in its own right. When his sword or other weapon suddenly flares into life in a halo of electricity, it becomes truly awe-inspiring or terrifying, depending on which side of the charge you are on. A power sword can still be used as an ordinary weapon should its power source become inhibited or damaged. Some of the more common patterns of power swords include The Ball Pattern Mark IV This is a modern variant commonly utilized by the Blood Angels chapter. The Cavalry Saber Favored by many Rough Rider Imperial Guard sergeants and officers, the Cavalry Saber is heavier than most Munitorum issue power swords, with a broad blade and consequently a somewhat larger power field. Though less nimble and delicate than its counterparts, this heavy blade is perfectly suited for cutting down enemies while charging on a swift mount. Those Rough Riders who are able to acquire a Cavalry Saber often use it as a secondary weapon, 
switching from their hunting lance if any enemies are left alive after the initial charge. The Frost Blade a frost blade is a master crafted melee weapon in the form of a sword, axe, chainsword, or any other type of bladed close combat weapon that is used exclusively by the warriors of the Space Wolves chapter. Every frost blade is considered among the most prized weapons of the chapter, and is crafted exclusively by a master iron priest. The Ingaldina Pattern this is another common variant of power sword utilized solely by the Adeptus Astartes. The Honor Blades Presented to the champions of the Ultramarines chapter, Honor Blades are a matching broadsword and poniard power blade set. When wielded together, the blades are perfectly matched and provide the champion with an expert defense and attack. The Loi Pattern Burning Blade what started as a series of malfunctioning power swords from the disreputable Clovis Munitorum became a new weapon type after users discovered the faulty field conduits raised the temperature of the blade to over 600 degrees. Loi Metalworks investigated and created what are now known as the burning blades, power swords that deliberately create intense heat along their blade so as to burn flesh to the bone with each strike. The Mark II Mars Pattern This is a commonly used variant of power sword utilized by the Dark Angels chapter. The Mordian Pattern This one is designed to support a defensive parry with a lighter weight and thinner two-sided blade. The Munitorum Pattern these are the cheaper versions, if you will, that are used mostly by Imperial Guard members. Some famous power swords throughout the Imperium's history include The Blades of Caliban The Blades of Caliban are chapter relics of the Dark Angels and their unforgiven successor chapters. Each one has its own honorable heritage. Only the champions of a company, belonging to the Dark Angels or their successor chapters, having performed heroically in faultless duty, earned the right to wield one of these unique power swords. The Blade of the Scorpion This one is a power sword and a powerful relic of war, having long been the chosen weapon of each successive Lord High Commander, aka Chapter Master of the Red Scorpions. This greatsword is perfectly balanced, having been made of microfolded adamantium, etched at a molecular level with liturgies of harm and destruction. The blade can cleave through even ceramite plate unassisted, when wielded by a space marine's superhuman might. But what makes the blade of the scorpion so special is its disruption field generator, which is far more powerful than that found on a standard power weapon and which gives the blade its devastating strength. In very skilled hands, the sword can bisect even a Chaos Terminator in a single blow, or shatter granite without so much as marring the blade's mirror-like finish. The Blade in Carmine The Blade in Carmine is a revered relic of the Blood Angels chapter, that is an artifact of Belarius. Belarius was a servant of the Primarch Sanguinius during the time of the Great Crusade and the Horus Heresy, and the blade was given to him by the Primarch himself. Belarius went on to become the first chapter master of the Blood Angels after the death of Sanguinius. Hashtag spoilers. The Chogoris Lightning Blade An ancient relic of the White Scars chapter, the Chogoris Lightning Blade is a dazzling silver power sword with a jagged blade, crafted in the shape of a lightning bolt. Seemingly heavy and unbalanced upon first inspection, the sword appears more a ceremonial piece than an actual weapon of war. When its power field is activated, it springs into life, blue radiance arching from its edge and intricate hidden suspensors in its hilt making it as light as a feather. The Chogoris Lightning Blade was passed on to the Death Watch by the White Scar's battle brother called Kubilai, upon his death fighting in the Hadex Anomaly. 
The Claw of the Desert Tiger This magnificent power sword is carried by Captain Al-Rahim, the company commander of the 3rd Talon Regiment, nicknamed the Desert Tigers. The curved blade of the weapon was crafted into the shape of a scimitar. It was forged by master artisans and encrusted with the emblems of the desert. Its appearance has raised the weapon to legendary status, so that in the hands of Al-Rahim it is regarded with awe by his friends and with fear by his enemies. Libertas This ancient power sword was born by none other than Nathaniel Garrow, former battle captain of the Death Guard. It was said that this ancient sword predated even its bearer. Some elements of the weapon had been fabricated on old Terra before the Age of Strife. There were no visible imperfections detected in the crystalline matrix of its monosteel blade. The Needle of Truth It is the task of the Dark Angel's interrogator chaplains to extract the truth from those captured by the chapter as well as to protect its secrets and maintain its spiritual well-being. The Needle of Truth is an ancient blade which was taken by the chapter to the Jericho Reach to uncover the secrets this new sector harbored, especially rumors of the Fallen. In addition to being a finely crafted power sword, the Needle of Truth has a terrible power over heretics. And while its blade is bared, any demon or follower of the Dark Gods suffers when in its presence. The Shard of Bekrin Among those defending the shrine world of Bekrin from the invasion of High Fleet Dagon was Tarvos, a Blood Angel's battle brother in the service of the Death Watch. During the evacuation of the world's clergy, Tarvos gave his life defeating a hive tyrant in a glorious display of heroism. Though his body was not recovered, his broken power sword was returned to the armory of Watch Station Arioch. Remarkably, the weapon still hums with power, though half of its length is gone, and those that look upon its stained blade at once feel the power of the brother who once wielded it. The blade has since become a relic of the Death Watch in the Jericho Ridge, and has found use both as an icon of valor and as a weapon, especially against the Tyranid swarms. The Talisarian Tempest Blade A rare and potent power sword wielded by the famous Captain Cato Sicarius, commander of the Ultramarines' second company. The weapon's energy field is so well attuned, and the blade contained within so sharp, that a focused attack from its wielder can slay any foe with a single strike. The Black Sword This is the traditional weapon of the Emperor's Champion. A massive two-handed power sword blessed by the chapter chaplains, it becomes a deadly weapon in the hands of the Chosen of the Black Templars chapter. And this, my friends, was what I wanted to tell you about the power swords of the Imperium for today. Would you want a power sword all of your own? What would you do with it? Apart from slaying heretics in the name of the Emperor, of course. Let us know and discuss in the comments below. Was this video informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for more content. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all a happy, happy day. The Emperor Protects.